Welcome to UGC e Pathshala Postgraduate Learning in Food Science. I am Dr. Maria Margaret Joseph, Associate Professor, Department of Home Science, Women's Christian College. Today we are going to learn about the classification, composition and nutritive value of poultry and fish. One of our main objectives of this program is to obtain a knowledge of the classification of fish and poultry and to understand the nutritional importance of fish and poultry. The term poultry as applied to all domestic birds as food and includes chickens, ducks, geese, turkeys and pigeons. Of these, chicken and turkey are the most commonly used for their meat. Let us look into the basis of classification of poultry. Whenever we go to buy uh, poultry, chicken is normally consumed very often in our households nowadays, especially with a lot of fast foods and the culture of food changing slowly to the western uh, preferences. Many teenagers and uh, the families as well are going to consume more, are tending to consume more of chicken based items especially the fast foods like your chicken 65 kfc and uh, even the other arabian delights like uh, shawarma etc so let us know what the different types of poultry are how to choose a good uh, meat in terms of poultry and what the nutritive value of each of these have okay so first there are about uh, five to six varieties First, we will look at what is meaning of broiler or fryer chicken. Very often, we find in all of our cold storage outlets, you have broiler chicken which is available. So, it is a chicken which is 8 to 10 weeks of age, either a male or female, and having a tender meat with soft, pliable, smooth textured skin and a flexible breastbone cartilage. Next variety is a rooster. It is a young chicken, usually 3 or 5 months of age, of either sex, male or female, having tender meat with soft, pliable, smooth textured skin and breastbone cartilage that may be somewhat less flexible than that of the broiler or the fryer. The third category is a stag. This is only a male chicken usually under 10 months of age with coarse skin, somewhat toughened and darkened flesh and considerable hardening of the breastbone cartilage. Next is the chewing chicken or fowl. Now this is a mature chicken, usually more than 10 months of age with meat less tender than that of a roaster and inflexible breastbone tip. Next we have the cock which is a mature male chicken usually over 10 months of age with coarse skin, toughened and darkened meat and hardened breastbone tip. Let's have a look at the picture of all these categories of poultry. You have the capon which is generally a male with a lot of uh, fat and being a uh, the non-vegetarian animal source, it is usually the saturated fat, not very good for health, which has usually some amount of cholesterol. Then you have the roaster, which can be either male or female. Then you have fryer or broiler, which uh, depending on the feed and the breed, the amount of cholesterol could vary. Then you have Cornish hen and last is the Poussin, which is the most tender a young uh, poultry which we use for different types of dishes. Now the poultry which is marketed is ready to cook is in the ready to cook form that is the head the feet and the entrails are removed this is what we call as a dressed chicken. After the birds are bled they are scalded and this that is dipped in a hot water briefly for a few seconds. The temperature of the scald water 
may be 60 degrees centigrade and the bird is kept for about 45 seconds or more safely and uh, with less chance of the outer layer of the skin otherwise known as cuticle removal which could be removed at 52 degrees centigrade in two minutes. The scalding has a purpose. It loses the feathers on the skin, chicken skin and thus helps defeathering, makes it a little more easier. After defeathering, the envisceration of the bird takes place. The enviscerated birds are thoroughly washed and chilled. The rapid chilling happens at 1.7 degrees centigrade is essential to control the growth of bacteria which contaminate the flesh once the skin is broken. Cooling is also necessary for the point from the point of view of tenderness of the meat. If the chicken is kept in a hot temperature for too long a period that could also add to toughening the texture of the meat. Chicken can be purchased whole, cut into parts or in packs of similar individual parts such as breast pieces or drumstick or thighs. Boneless, skinless breasts or thighs have no waste and save preparation time. Chicken can be purchased whole. This we've seen. Yeah, okay. So the chicken, uh, the dressed chicken, it can be graded before it is marketed. We said earlier you get different specialized cuts and pieces of chicken. But before that they have to be graded. That is they are assigned two grades. Grade 1 and grade 2. This is based on confirmation. That is the deformations that detract from the normal appearance, uh, the meatiness, the fat covering the, the chicken, the defeathering that has taken place and the cuts and tears and the discoloration that is present on the carcass or the animal after killing. The graded poultry is individually packed in low moisture and low oxygen transmission films or bags. Before seating, before sealing the packs, care is taken to expel the air between the carcass and the bag. The sealed bags may be stored under frozen refrigeration, that is refrigerated poultry, it has a shelf life, only of a few days, 6 to 10 days. Frozen poultry at minus 23 degrees centigrade to minus 18 degrees centigrade can be stored up to a maximum period of 9 months. Poultry meat. This has a very high protein content. So when you compare the vegetarian and the non-vegetarian foods, you will find that non-vegetarian foods definitely have a higher amount of protein. But uh, that also has to be taken depending on the protein requirement of the individual uh, human being, whether you need a low protein or a high protein diet. And um, another point I'd like to stress here is the quality of protein that is present. It is of good value. Okay, so it is of high nutritive value when compared to other meats and it has all the essential amino acids. What are essential amino acids? These are amino acids as you know amino acids are the basic, basic building blocks of a protein. So essential amino acids they are called so because if they are present in the protein, the protein is said to be complete and it will perform the perfect function of growth of tissues, new tissues and also of repair of existing tissues in the body. So therefore, the poultry meat despite having a 25% amount of protein also has a good biological value quality protein which has many of the essential amino acids. The, regarding the fat, there is little fat on the meat of young birds but the fat content is influenced by age 
and the type of poultry. So as the age of the animal increases, the fat content proportionately tends to increase. It is also linked with the uh, environment in which the animal or the poultry is brought up in. If it is given a free environment where it can you know literally run around the place and uh, pick and uh, take the food grain properly, it will have some muscular movement and exercise and it will be a better quality protein than some of the poultry which are kept just in small cages and just given sufficient room to probably stand, eat, drink water, sleep. Okay, their meat, they might put on more weight, but the quality of the muscle definitely will be different and the composition of the muscle tissue also will be different. Chicken fat is more unsaturated than the fat of red meat and this has a nutritional advantage. Like other animal tissues, poultry flesh is a good source of B vitamins especially vitamin B12 and minerals. So iron, it has a good source of iron as well. Talking about fat, the saturated fat is one which is bad for health. And the more the age of the animal, the higher the cholesterol level could be, saturated level of fat also could increase. But that is why we prefer white meat, which is a chicken meat, poultry meat, which is white, also fish, which is white. And these generally have a comparatively lower level of fat, especially saturated fat, which is really bad for health. The dark meat of chicken is richer in riboflavin, one of the B vitamins very required for energy metabolism. So if you need your energy and your carbohydrate uh, nutrients also to be metabolized to give you energy, you do need the B vitamins along with your macronutrients so that energy can be produced. So that is there in chicken. It's a dark meat of chicken which has a riboflavin than the light. But the light meat is richer in niacin. This is also a B vitamin and both are equally needed for the production of energy in the body. White meat is lower in fat and calories than dark meat. But skinless dark meat is still lower in fat than some cuts of red meat. Dark meat supplies more iron than white meat. It's simple. The dark meat or the dark red color is because of the myoglobin that is present. And the hemoglobin is a component which gives a red color to the meat. and uh, Okay, so that is why you have a high iron content also. And uh, dark meat supplies more iron than the white meat. The skin color of chicken does not affect nutritional value, the flavor or the tenderness or the fat content. The skin color has nothing to do with it, okay? But if the skin is present in the chicken, then the fat content of the chicken also will increase. That is why nowadays you are instructed to have uh, chicken or the poultry without the skin. So that you will take more of protein, the good quality protein, with less amount of fat that could come along if the skin is there. Undoubtedly we know that the skin is the most tastiest part of the chicken because of the fat content. Generally in our diet you will know that if we have a lot of fat in the diet, it is very tasty and appetizing. But unfortunately, that is something which is not favorable for us. We have to have nutritious food and selected and a little amount of fat in the diet. We cannot just have only tasty foods and therefore consume a lot of fat food. Because of its high protein to fat ratio, poultry meat is advantageous to persons who must restrict the intake of fats. So you will see some uh, sports people are advised to cut down on the amount of fat but they need the protein component. In that case they can go for lean foods with less of fat, still choosing foods of animal origin and having the protein component as required but reducing on the fat component and still having a nutritious diet.
Now let us look into the details of how fish is classified and uh, what is it composed of and therefore the nutritive value of fish. India as we all know has a very vast coastline of 5100 kilometers and as a result of which we can have almost 200 different edible varieties of fish of commercial importance. The marine type that's what's found in the sea has a higher salinity and uh, these include sardines, mackerel, tuna, catfish, scombroids, brown duck, ribbon fish, prawns and cutlet. The cats, uh, the cutler and the carps, rohu, mrigal, murals and hilsa are the main catch from inland water. In India, the bulk of the main catch from inland water, the bulk of the fish that we get, whether it's inland or from the sea, is around 65 to 70 percent and it is sold as such, whereas some of it is dried. 10 to 15 percent is sold in the dried condition with a very little processing or value addition. This seems to be one of the um, staple uh, food along with the cereals for many of the coastline uh, states of our country, Kerala, even Tamil Nadu and uh, Karnataka etc. And uh, these uh, along Andhra Pradesh also, all the states were along the coastline and uh, these people also have experienced good health because of all the benefits of nutrients, the type of uh, fatty acids and oils, fish oils which are got from these fish and uh, some of them even cure it to a state of um, you know salting it and drying it so that these fish are available throughout the year and that uh, nutrition is also assured to these people and uh, some of them cannot even have the normal diet without having a small piece of fish. Although fish contains complete proteins and can be an alternative for meat in the diet, fish consumption per capita is far lower than that of meat. So what do you mean by complete proteins? If I, I told you earlier, it has most of the essential amino acids and therefore it promotes growth of tissue and repair of old tissues in the body. Okay, let us see how the fish that is locally available is classified. The edible fish can be categorized into two main categories. One is the fin fish, which is mostly the saltwater fish, the marine fish or the shell fish. The term fish refers to the fishes that have bony skeleton. Most fin fish come from salt water. However, great lakes and inland water add considerable amounts to the total catch of the fish that is available. Edible shell fish are mainly salt water fish. Shell fish is used to designate both mollusks and crustaceans. Shellfish are highly perishable. They are best when purchased fresh directly from the fishermen and they may be expensive when they are sold at the larger outlets or the shops in the inland areas because of the very short storage of life. The consumption and demand for shellfish, especially shrimps and prawns has increased since frozen products have become widely available. Crustacea have legs with partly, which are partly joined to the outer shells. They include crabs, prawns, lobsters and shrimps. The dense coarse flesh is found mainly in the claws and the tail. Example in the lobster and the crab. This flesh is not as digestible as other types of fish. Lobsters and crabs are best kept alive up to the point of their cooking or freezing. Otherwise, they deteriorate in quality in a matter of a day or less. 
That is why you will find in various places, I have seen in Calcutta, you will find people sitting in the fish market, you know, the fishermen selling the fish, having the fresh fish in the water in large uh, tanks or pots of water and they keep waving their hands in the water to keep the fish alive so that they are sold as fresh as possible with the maximum amount of nutrients to the customer. Now let us have a look at this classification of fish. So the main two broad classification of fish, one is the fin fish which is a saltwater fish having a higher amount of salinity than the freshwater fish and the shell fish. The fin fish are further divided into freshwater, saltwater fish. Under the freshwater fish you have uh, fatty fish and uh, under the saltwater fish you have uh, once again lean and fatty fish. So both fresh and saltwater have both the varieties of fatty fish and lean fish. Little later we will see about what is the fatty fish. Under shell fish you have two basic categories. One is crustacean and the other one is mollusks. The crustaceans include crab, greyfish, lobster, shrimp and uh, mollusks. They include uh, clams, mussel, oyster, scallops. Uh, apart from that you have um, the snail and uh, coach fish and the last category is also there which includes the uh, squids which are octopus and squids which are also quite famous in the market nowadays. People always look for a variety in the diet and uh, most of these seafoods provide good nutrients which are very much valuable for the body growth and development. Commonly we see in the market and we consume fish such as the carp, rohu, sardine, mackerel, pomfrets, sear, prawns, ribbon fish, sole fish, bombay duck, catfish and even crabs. Whenever the catch is there, they supply squid and crab, lobster depending on the season. Coming to the composition of fish, of the different varieties of fish, let's look at the nutritive value which is given in the following table. Fish are not very good sources of energy because they don't have much of carbohydrate and fat. The actual carbohydrate content of a shellfish is less fat, less fat and more carbohydrate. Both fat and carbohydrate are present in lower amounts in fish. Compared between the two, fat is a little more present than the carbohydrate. Like meat, fish contain some glycogen in muscle tissues. In the, in the live fish, glycogen is a source of stored energy. You know, glycogen is another alternative form in which energy can be stored in the body. And oysters are notable for their high content of glycogen. On an average, it, they have 2 to 3 percent of glycogen, which is a very good source of energy. Let's take a look at the table which has most of the common fish which we consume in our country and the nutritive value of these fishes. We have the, some of the fishes are given the local Tamil name which is there along with the nutrients which are present. The sardine also known as Mati in Tamil, it gives about 101 kilocalories of energy per 100 grams of fish. All these values are per 100 grams of the fish. Protein is 21 grams per 100 grams, fat is 1.9 grams, uh, it has no carbs or very little or negligible, we can't say no, it will be very low amount. Calcium, there is 90 milligrams of calcium per 100 grams of sardine. And finally you have phosphorus which is 360 milligrams. Actually if you look at this general data, you will find that fish has a reasonable amount of energy, high protein, uh, low fat, some fish have high but most of it is a low fat and um, carbohydrate content is only 1 to 2 percent, calcium is high depending on the type of fish 
and phosphorus also is high. So you can see how they form a very um, you know good source of minerals, valuable minerals like calcium and phosphorus. Coming back to the second popular fish which we consume, the sear fish also known as vanjaram. This is expensive but consumed very commonly among our uh, the local people. It has 126 kilocalories per 100 grams. Protein is 22.5 grams per 100 grams. Fat is 4 grams. Negligible carbohydrate, 71 milligrams of calcium and 572 milligrams of phosphorus. Shark fish, commonly called as Sora, has 100, it, no, it has 93 kilocalories of energy per 100 grams. Protein, once again, in the same range as sear and sardine, 21.6 grams. And fat, very less, 0 0.4 grams for 100 grams of shark fish. Carbohydrate is only 0.8 grams. And calcium, 357 milligrams. Phosphorus, 262 milligrams all per 100 grams talking of shrimp okay which is generally small and dried it has uh, 349 kilocalories of energy 68 a very high content of protein 68.1 grams per 100 gram fat also is high 8.5 grams per 100 grams and calcium and phosphorus are also relatively high because mostly we come, consume shrimp with the shell and the shell is a very rich source of minerals, especially calcium. 4,384 grams per 100 grams. Of course, we might not consume 100 grams, but these are the values which are given. Depending on which, if you take uh, 20 grams of the fish or the shrimp, you can make a calculation. Phosphorus is 1,160 milligrams per 100 grams. Last, we'll see the fish called sole, and the common name is verale. The energy that it has is 94, uh, not much of energy. Protein is 16.2 grams. Fat is less, 2.3 grams per 100 grams. Little amount of carbs, 2.2 grams. Calcium is also less. Calcium and phosphorus are very less when compared to the other locally consumed fish, 140 and 95 milligrams per 100 grams. To continue the table, we have uh, the crab, nutritive value of crab, uh, locally called as nande in Tamil. Then it has 169 kilocalories, 112 grams of protein, 9.8 grams of fat, 9.1 grams of carbohydrate, 1606 milligrams calcium and 253 milligrams of phosphorus. Then you have Katla, also known as Teppu Mina. It is 111 kilocalories of energy, 19.5 grams of protein and 2.5 grams of fat with reasonable amount of calcium and phosphorus, 530 and 235. Next you have the next most common fish, mackerel, which is Isla. It has 93 kilocalories of energy, 18.9 grams of protein, 1.7 grams of fat, very less carbohydrate, 0.5 grams, calcium 429 and phosphorus 305 milligrams. Next important one is uh, Vavale, the Tamil name for black pomfret and white pomfret is also there. Comparatively, they have around 87 to 101 kilocalories of energy. 17 to 20 grams of protein and 1 to 2.6 grams of fat minimum carbohydrate and a low level of calcium and phosphorus though they are rich uh, 200 to 286 290 to 306 milligrams of calcium and phosphorus prawn which is very uh, favorite among uh, people also known as yera has 89 kilocalories of energy 19.1 grams of protein, 1 gram of fat, 0 0.8 grams of carb, 323 milligrams of calcium and 278 milligrams of phosphorus. So from the table we could see 
that uh, fish and uh, whether they are crustacea or the mollusks or the freshwater fish, they have a very low level of carbohydrate and fat, whereas uh, quite high in protein that is around 15 to 20 percent of protein which we get from 100 grams of fish is good quality protein with a little amount of energy compared to other non-vegetarian items and also a very valuable source of calcium and phosphorus. Apart from these fish, there are other varieties of mollusks like oyster etc which give reasonably high levels of selenium and zinc which are very vital for body function despite the fact that they are only required in trace amounts. One important fact I would like to state here is the function of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. These are unsaturated fatty acids which are present in fish liver, so fish liver oil and in the fatty fish per se and which really protect the body from cardiovascular disease and are very essential for the development and function of the brain and prevent a lot of inflammatory diseases such as arthritis. So in this module we have seen the classification of fish and poultry, what the different types are, what the nutritive value of different varieties are and also we have seen what type of uh, fish one needs to consume to get uh, particular nutrients and uh, we also have seen what are the uh, extra nutrients you can get from certain fatty fish like the omega 3 and 6 fatty acids and uh, therefore we can make a wise choice of fish when we go to the market and uh, therefore have a good balanced a healthy diet and reduce the risk of disease among our community and in our families. Thank you.